if you look at 6.84. Mr. Troopas, let me ask you a question. Um, that section of the statute 501, that of course applies statewide, does it not? Yes, it does. All 72 counties, correct? Yes. Not just all counties in the state, except for Dane County and Milwaukee County, am I right? Yes. The Wisconsin Supreme Court heard arguments Saturday in the Trump campaign's lawsuit seeking to overturn results of the November 3rd election. The president appealed to the high court after a lower court judge dismissed his lawsuit. The court should do everything to ensure that the will of the voters prevail. The U.S. Supreme Court also denied a lawsuit filed by the Texas Attorney General. Ken Paxton, who is under FBI investigation, wanted the high court to overturn results in Wisconsin, Michigan, Georgia, and Pennsylvania. That would have handed the election to President Trump. More than 100 Republican members of Congress, including Wisconsin's Tom Tiffany, signed on to that effort. The presidential electors officially meet tomorrow to cast their votes. Wisconsin has 10 electors, and because Joe Biden won the election, they are all Democrats. What happens when electors meet? We're taking a look into that process today with one of the Democratic electors, Democratic National Committee member, Karee Pennybaker of Milwaukee. Thanks for being with us again here on Upfront. And I'm interested, do the president's lawsuits to overturn the election impact at all what you do as an elector? No, it doesn't. And first, uh, good morning, and thanks again for having me on. But no, the, uh, the these lawsuits don't impact what we're going to do uh, tomorrow. Uh, it only provides, uh, on one hand, some fodder, something to laugh at. And also, it's a, it's a stark reminder that there are a group of people who literally want to steal democracy from the hands of America's voters. And we simply didn't let that happen. And our American institutions stood up to that kind of uh, political uh, and, and legal uh, nonsense. But I'm, I'm glad things worked out in our favor. And we're going to vote tomorrow for Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. Has anyone reached out to you on this? I'm interested if anyone's seen that you're an elector and then approached <laughs> you about it. Oh, of course. Uh, you got people uh, that, that vary on the spectrum from being relatively decent, although their their rationale and their reasoning is pretty flawed, to those who simply want to harass us. Uh, but at the same time, you know, there's nothing that they can do that's going to stop our vote tomorrow. And walk us through that process. What does that look like for people who don't know in terms of what is happening tomorrow in Madison? Sure. So this is my second time being elector, but the first time I'll actually get to cast the ballot. In 16, I didn't get a chance to, obviously. Uh, so what's going to happen is uh, we're going to convene in a very large room. It is closed to the public due to the pandemic, but it will be live streamed on Wisconsin Eye. Um, there will be some front end elections, which uh, really don't matter a whole lot because it's 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 a tradition type of a thing. Then there will be six certificates that each one of us will have to sign. So that's six signatures per elector. And that will be essentially it. Then we'll take some pictures and all that good stuff. But ultimately, we'll do all this entire process in, in a safe and controlled way so that we can get the, 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 uh, the job done and uh, be mindful of the pandemic. And, and how long are you expecting this entire thing to last? Less than an hour. Okay, yeah, that's I mean, pretty, it's pretty quick. quick. I mean, the, the, the downside here of having this pandemic, uh, aside from the reality of people dying, we have 280,000 plus Americans that have died and, and you know, what, 13 million people that have been infected. Um, we aren't going to have the, the pomp and circumstance you might normally have from a, a regular environment where we weren't impacted by this pandemic. So we're not going to be able to do all those things. So it'll be pretty quick this time. I'm wondering, do you have any kind of concern about tomorrow with anything coming up, whether that be people trying to protest this process, safety, it possibly getting pushed back, just anything, any concerns? I do. Um, and that's because uh, Donald Trump and his enablers have lied to their supporters and made them believe this nefarious uh, network of, of crimes have happened and this election has been stolen from them. And you have some of those extremist people who will act out in violence. Uh, but you, you think back into the 60s where uh, the, the late great John Lewis marched across the Edmund Pettus Bridge knowing what the brutality was going to be like once he got on the other side. But he kept going. You think about all the harassment and death threats that Martin Luther King got, but he kept going. Think about all of the harassment that uh, Malcolm X got, and he kept going. So will I. All right. Well, nice There's to see you again. nothing that they can do that's going to stop us. Thank you, Curry. I appreciate it. Thank you.
There are two more important dates coming up in this process you should know about on January 6th. The joint session of Congress will meet to count the electoral votes and declare the results. And on January 20th, Joe Biden will take the oath of office as the 46th president. Our editorial partner with politics.com writes a newsletter to keep you up to date on the 2020 election developments. You can sign up for Battleground Wisconsin 2020 at wispolitics.com. Next on Upfront, a national honor for a Kenosha activist.